Hi, I'm Richard Randall, and welcome to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker, owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. This is the weekly radio show that informs and educates you on how to buy or sell real estate with Colorado's real estate authority. That's Barb Schlinker. Barb is a retired Navy veteran. Barb Schlinker is an author. Barb's a pilot, and she and her team enjoy all that Colorado and the Front Range have to offer. Barb, always great to be talking with you. Now, we air your real estate voice every Saturday. And if you can't listen to the entire show, it's always available on Barb's site, barbhasthebuyers.com, or just go ahead and search the popular podcast platforms like iHeartRadio, Spotify, put in Barb Schlinker, it'll pull up the show. Every week, your real estate voice covers great information about people's primary asset, their home. So Barb, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, Richard, I'm excited about today's show. We've got a couple of new topics. Uh, the first one is the top solutions for absolute certainty that when you're selling a home, that it's going to sell because not every home sells. A lot of deals fall apart for various reasons. So we're going to go into some solutions that we have for folks. And then the next one, I haven't covered this in a long time, but I think it's important because um, there's an awful lot of bias out there for home sellers that are considering offers in which the borrower, the buyer, is using either a VA loan, a veteran's benefit loan, or an FHA loan. A lot of them think that their closing costs are gonna be higher. They think that their house is gonna be scrutinized a lot more. So we're gonna dispel all those myths and go in a lot of detail about that. And then we're gonna talk about the top nine mistakes to avoid when selling your home and then, of course, the last one is a checklist to get your house ready for sale should you plan to go on the market and some hot new listings. Now, I have a deadline alert, Richard, that I have to bring up because everybody has been reaching out to me about all their pain points with these counties just stepping on the gas and raising their property taxes like crazy. A lot of people are going through appeals and looking for more data, but another deadline ends today. It is the the deadline to file the senior tax exemption. So what that tax exemption actually does for homeowners that have been in their home for more than 10 years and they were age 65 on January 1st of this year, they actually qualify for a reduction in their property taxes of about $100,000 of value but they have to apply to get it. I talked to one gentleman that <laughs> he'd been in his house for like 40 years and he hadn't applied yet. So um, today is the deadline. Now, if you don't apply today, I know it's a Saturday. I know a lot of the post office is closed. I think the latest time might be two o'clock. Okay, that's fine. You can still file it over the next 30 days, but you won't be able to appeal if they deny your application, which if you qualify, there's no reason why they wouldn't give you approval for this tax exemption. So it's one way for our listeners out there to save money on their property taxes. Richard? Barb, most people do not sell a home very often. And if they're upgrading to another home, they often have to sell the current home in order to buy their next home. What should home sellers do to sell their home for the most money and solutions for having a house to sell first? It's a catch-22. It really is, Richard, and most real estate agents don't have a solution. Most home buyers don't have a solution. And some of the requests that I see come across my desk when I get offers, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, will you take your house off the market and not give it to any other buyer and wait for us to sell our home. So most home sellers aren't interested in that. How would you feel about that, Richard? I would be absolutely, well, first of all, I would make a phone call to you to find out what to do because a lot of people just have no idea unless they're talking to a professional like you and somebody who has a fiduciary relationship. Yeah, and actually a third of homes that are on the market actually fail to sell. Even though we have low inventory right now, uh, the prices in the last four or five months have started heading back up again, which is really good. We kind of um, came back up from all of the 
price correction that we experienced since the Fed has been raising the interest rates. However, um, there are fewer sales going on. So not every home gets a bit more and not every home sells. It's all about pricing it right and or having good condition. Um, so did you know that leaving your home on the market for months and months and very, very slowly walking the price down, you're going to net less money. So how do you know if you're off on price? I get a lot of sellers that ask me that because they, they don't know. They're figuring, hey, if it takes a few months to sell, that's okay. Well, when the market was booming two years ago, if it took more than a couple of days or even a couple of hours in some areas to sell, buyers would assume there was something wrong with your house. But actually, um, right now, the average time on market in the Pikes Peak region is about 23 days. Denver Metro, it's only about five days. Um, and so if you put your home on the market and you're not getting indications of demand right away, and there is ramp up, ramp up time from the time you go on the market um, for people to be aware that it's there. I call those buyers and those agents, the people that are late to the party, <laughs> yeah. especially if it's priced right. So like last week, I put a house on the market on Monday, very cute, priced very well. And I could tell right away it was going to be a high demand home because we were getting call after call after call, people wanting to get in to see it and wanting to know if we had other offers. And oh my gosh, I had somebody actually ask me to show it to them on the 4th of July, which is kind of a sacred day for me. So I didn't do it. Plus, they didn't make an offer anyway. So why would I make an accommodation for something like that when we weren't really going to start showings until the open house? So that was a good indication that that home was going to get a, a high demand. And it did. We had 101 people at the open house. I presented nine offers last night and the seller sold that home for way over asking price. So it's all about positioning the home to create demand. Part of it was what the homeowner did by getting the house ready for sale. It was not a full on remodel. It didn't look like Corinthian leather, but they did the basics, flooring, paint, appliances, things that make the buyers go, hey, this is great. I could move in, drop my stuff. And if I ever wanted to remodel this or that, I could. So if you price too high, if you're not getting demand and you slowly walk the price down, you're actually going to net less money. Another clue is if you're not getting very many showings uh, or if you're getting, um, you know, showings, but no offers. Both of those indications are, are an indication that you're priced too high. And actually, um, most home sellers actually want their home to be positioned and they want their agents to help them position the home to price it competitively. Um, but you have to look at a lot of factors, not just similar sales. You've got to also look at what the current competition is to position the home to get buyer demand into the home. And then once you accept a contract, sellers want certainty. They want to know their house will sell. They want to know that they're going to get the price they want and need. They want to know everything's going to go through and go smoothly. And they want to be sure that they're moving on to their destination and they'll have the funds to improve their lifestyle. So, you know, I've, I've had all kinds of stories that happen all the time. I recently had a, a home seller in which we had multiple showings, multiple offers, they happen to be home during this showing, right? So they met the buyer, they liked the buyer, the, that buyer made the highest offer, but the agent didn't tell me that buyer had a house to sell. I didn't find out until like, we were ready to send the counter proposal, which would have meant that that buyer went under contract with my seller and the seller was committed, even though the offer was presented basically on a fraud because when I talked to the lender, I said, hey, I want to verify that you've pre-approved this buyer, they're approved through underwriting, you check their income, their tax returns, all that. And he goes, oh yeah, but uh, they have a house to sell. <laughs> I'm oh like, my gosh. What? It wasn't in the contract. And so uh, I said, well, why didn't you put it in your pre-approval letter? He goes, oh, we never do that. We just tell the buyer's agent and they do whatever they do. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, 
that that's huge information to make a seller to decide which offer to take so when i went back to the seller and said hey i just talked to the lender are you sure you want to go with this buyer because they have a house to sell that just hit the market today and the answer was no no we can't wait for that so we moved on to a different buyer but that's why positioning the home appropriately and knowing all the information is critical and if you have more than one offer it's a really good position for a home seller to be in because you have choices um and here's the thing i have seen buyers come along recently they made an offer on one of my listings and said hey we want you to take your house off the market and wait for us to sell ours now at least their home was on the market most of the agents send those offers and their home is not on the market yet which is really frustrating um, but in, in fact, that wasn't the case. It was on the market. It was getting showings, but it had an issue, which it was right on a major highway. So it wasn't selling. Now there's a price for that, right? Not every agent knows how to position a home that way. And the reason is 81% of the agents sell three or less homes a year. So there is a price for every property. My name is Barb Schlinker. I'm with Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. I'm the host of Your Real Estate Voice, and I've been here in the business since the 90s. And what we're talking about is what do you do if you get an offer from a buyer that has a house to sell? Well, guess what? We have solutions. So coming up, we're going to talk about that on how you avoid getting stuck with two homes. Richard? You're listening to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker. She is your real estate voice, and she's the owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. You can always reach Barb at 719-301-3900. And we're talking with Barb about great information about selling one of your largest assets. For most people, that is your home. Barb has the buyers.com. It's a great place to start. Barb, Tell us about how sellers can trade up to a new home. What are some solutions to avoid getting stuck with two homes and two payments at the same time? Right. So we actually offer a guarantee uh, buy this home, I'll buy yours. So if they come to us, we can guarantee the sale of their home so they could buy your home without a sale contingency. Also, um, if you have a house to sell, like I met many people that had a paid for house, but they don't want to you know, sell their home, they want to make sure that their home is sold before they commit to another home. There are some other ideas that you can use. You can get a home equity line of credit. You could pull money from a retirement account for a short period of time. There's all kinds of options out there to help you make that transition. And it's very easy to do. There's even something called a recast loan where if you buy your next home first, if you ask the lender for the recast, they don't wanna do this unless you ask for it, um, then basically you buy your next home first and when your current home sells, you take that equity, put it down on your new home and they readjust the payment without refinancing. So if you wanna to talk to us about those things, we also have 64 high net worth buyers. And what we do is we take pictures and video of your home and we submit your home to these cash buyers and they actually compete for your home in what I call my buyer bid box. So if you are thinking of making a move, give us a call at 719-301-3900 or go to barbhasthebuyers.com. I've had that website since 2014. I have over 27,000 buyers on that site. Typically I can find at least a hundred that will match your home and we can talk about how we can help you make your next move, Richard. You're listening to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. She's the host. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of accepting offers with VA or FHA financing. Stay tuned for that. You don't want to miss it. 